and then I'll just give. First into the den are a trio from County Meath. Carissa, her stepdad Martin, and their friend and accountant Frank believe they've designed a piece of furniture that will create a better everyday life for people who live with a disability. Table Table came about when my wife came home to me one day and uh, she asked me would I make a table because she's an art therapist and uh, they were working on one-to-one -one and she couldn't get them all around in a group so there was no table suitable for that. Take their money home. So I made a table. You know, husbands do what their wives tell them, you know? It's such a big phenomenon that it actually needs somebody to come in and to help us along because it, it could be something that could have a whole paradigm shift in the way people are cared for in health facilities and in care facilities. We don't think that the dragons will think that it's a limited product. It's universally designed. Anywhere where there's a table, there should be an able table. It's the same as a wheelchair ramp. Like, it's, it, it's something that people need. There's no reason it shouldn't be available in any facility. Hello, dragons. My name is Martin Finucane, and I'm here today looking for 30,000 of your hard-earned cash for 10% of our company. The concept for the able table came about when my mum, Esther, who's a care assistant and art therapist, went looking for a table that would be inclusive of everybody in her classroom. Because the majority of the service users in her class are in wheelchairs, they cannot sit together during group activities and mealtimes. This means that they're usually cared for on an individual basis with a small tray or table that's placed in front of their wheelchair. After looking online for a wheelchair accessible group table, she soon found that there was nothing suitable on the market. So she asked Martin, who's pretty handy, <laughs> to build her one. After a few weeks of working on a design, we had our first able table. In any of the facilities where the able table has been installed, the feedback that we've received has been amazing. Although the majority of the table's users have profound disabilities, they're just so happy to be sitting together at a table together. The able table is inclusion in its most basic form. A confident pitch by the trio. Is the able table the most accessible, functional and practical table ever designed? OK, thanks. Is there nothing similar to this on the no, market? No, there's absolutely nothing similar. The only things they would have was uh, they have ordinary tables just with, for one person to sit at. There was no actual table like this that you could have a, a group setting with. Do you know what I mean? You couldn't have, there was nothing there for group activities or anything like that. What price are you selling this table it's, for? It's uh, 1,600 euros plus VAT. OK, thank you. So, Martin, the uh, design concept is the... Um, concave that you've cut for the carer is deeper than it is for the person in the wheelchair. The, that's correct, yeah. Do I suspect that's for feeding them or because, yeah, because you're ahead of them, is it? Yeah, it means that if you're sitting at the table, you'll actually look as if you're at the same level at them, but you will actually be you're five centimetres in front of them. And that means you can, you can look at them when you're feeding yeah. them, do you know what I mean? Before the cover even came off, I knew what this was by the shape of it, because I read about it very recently in, oh, in the press. Very good. Um, <laughs> and I remember thinking it was just an ingenious product. Um, oh, thank you very much. So I, I also think your brand name, Able Table, has the holy grail of branding. It, it describes <laughs> what the product does, as well yeah. as the name of the product. So well done on that. Yeah, Thanks very much. It's Carisa. a catchy one. <laughs> Who came up with the brand name? Carissa. Uh, me, yeah. Well no. done. Yeah. You've mentioned that you've had some sales already. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we've, we've sold about 11 of them so far. We've built... We have 15 of them manufactured. The cost of building them is about 590. So there's about 63% uh, gross profit on them and the sales price of 1,600. It is one of the most expensive items I've ever heard of. With that and everything, it's costing me 2,000 euro. Yeah. But you, you have to remember, you're not going to be buying this for your home. This is going into a care facility. If they go to buy a bed or a wheelchair, you can spend anything up to 8,000 euros on a wheelchair. But like, how, <laughs> sorry, sorry, the reason, part of it's, the, the reason it costs 2,000 is, you're, Frank, are you pocketing 1,000 on each table or how <laughs> much? <laughs> what, what, what did you say was the sort of gross on the table? The, the, the gross is 1,000 and, 1,000, yeah, 1,000. Fair to you. Yeah. Uh, so, 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 uh, so, yeah, but like, how could it cost that much to make? A table. It costs uh, 590 to make the table. Like, it's a case that we can, like, we obviously 
the more this volume that special, we get, it, the cheaper this, it'll be. With the size of the table, you have to buy a special sheet of timber, right? Yeah, and that, that, that's one of the things from a design point of view. Yeah, it's not, so it's not eight by four. It's you not have an to, eight by four, right? Yeah, so okay. start off, you have to go to England, you have to buy these massive big sheets, right? Right. And you get one table out of each. Oh yeah, well, okay. But like, you know, you're in, an, you're, yeah. you're, you're in a hospital environment, I suppose. Well, it has to be good and it has to be strong. If you were able to find a way to, to make them for half the price, and I that think that has to be... That could be done, we have to be. just get rid of Frank. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, right. <laughs> if you went to China... If you went Two to, to one China, ratio. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Frank. <laughs> you would save money if you went to China, if you got yeah, a Well, that's China. exactly what I'm thinking. You yeah. know, I mean, you're, you're looking at a very low-tech... Um, yeah. Piece here. Like, we're not, it's not a case that we're, you know, just trying to sell it for as much as possible. So, would that make the sale easier? Of course, it would, yeah, yeah, because I'm going in and I'm looking for 2,000 off these people, you know. From what I'm hearing here, the main target market is nursing homes and hospitals. Is that the. It's nursing homes, hospitals, it's special schools, ordinary schools. And it's a, what, you don't what, to, what size you don't is that have, market? You don't, well, between schools and all the homes, is this two hundred? Between Ireland and England, there's two hundred and fifty-five thousand actual places that you can go that to. That you sell think you to. can sell it in? Wow. Yeah. Our projections are based on getting into the UK, really. You know, because that's where we will sell. The potential market is so big. But like the thing about the table is, if you buy one of them, you'll probably buy two of them. Have you found the nursing home market easy to sell no, into? No, it's very hard, actually. No. I, I'll be honest with you. The reason it is hard is because, you know, they have a fixed, a fixed yeah, amount fixed that they're getting from yeah. their, their customers, yeah. if you like, yeah. and therefore, if they spend more, then they're going to have to raise the price. Yeah. Uh, so it's not the easiest market to sell into. The Dragons all recognise that this is an important piece of furniture, but with high production costs, could the Able Table be copied by their competitors for a lower price? Is it protected in any way. Yeah. yeah. So we have um, a design patent in 27 countries, including Ireland and the UK. It is protected. I know it's something yeah, that you might America say is easily ready, replicated. Yeah, okay. Martin, have you any other product ideas up your sleeve we for this indeed. segment? Yeah, we have, yeah, we have. We're developing a whiteboard we're developing table. a whiteboard table as well for preschools. And, uh, That'd I be have... a child-sized table. Frank, how much are you going to charge for the whiteboard? Uh? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's going to have to go up to that now. <laughs> Martin, I think you must be good because you've sold I have, yeah. I, the first table I sold was in Blanchestown. When I brought the table in, I was telling the OT about it anyway, and he had a, a lady there, and she was in a wheelchair, and she had never been at a table. And he brought her over, and he wheeled her in, and put her beside the table, and you could see her face, the smile on her face. She was so, so happy. He bought the table there and then. He says, it's just worth it, just for this person alone. You know? The way we kind of see it is that, as optimistic or up in the air as it might seem, we actually feel that these tables will eventually be everywhere in care facilities because they're so good for caring. And the social inclusion is for people that were sitting on seats on their own, alone, being fed by a nurse, suddenly interacting and talking to each other. The potential is there for this to go huge. Global domination may be on Frank's mind, but Gavin isn't sure about some elements of the table design, particularly the quad leg. I mean, this is a strange thing. From a design point of view, the quad is a problem for me, right? I just think in this market, you're, you're, you're going to have to address that design yeah. situation. Yeah. Yeah. You can come up with a, a base, a flat base on the bottom. Do you know that's what, I mean? what we'd ideally yeah. want, that's just ideally something want that's completely at the flush to the floor. What will that do to the cast? That'll drive the cast up. Yeah. <laughs> that part I worked out. I have much. If somebody wants it, we'll do it. That's kind of our, our motto. Like this is your real challenge to get that it part is, of it. It is indeed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, we're still working out the we're design. We're still working out on that. But my advice is, when you solve it, don't tell the cost to Frank for a while. No, yeah. no. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> um, Carissa, Martin, and Frank have asked for thirty thousand euro for a ten percent share of Able Table. Do the dragons believe that this patent-designed table is investable? I'd be a little bit worried that someone else will do something similar, a slightly different design, but yeah. the same utility. So for that reason, I'm out. Thanks very much. Okay, thank you. I think what you're doing is great, but um, I have no experience in the furniture business or the health sector. 
Uh, I wish you luck with it, uh, but I'm out. That's great. Thanks very much. Thanks, anyway. Thanks for listening. Yeah. Guys, I love this idea. I've no doubt that it's going to fly. It's just not fitting in my portfolio at the moment. Um, so for that reason, and that reason only, I'm out. Same. Thanks for listening. With only Gavin and Eamon remaining, is Able Table's chance of investment slipping away? I'm struggling here. It's not through the money. Um, I, I mean, it's just kind of, I'm trying to think, can I add value to it here? I mean, part of me says, look, you, you, should, you guys should just go out and make a deal with, with uh, a couple of the good distributors and uh, you concentrate on what you're doing. Let them do the selling and, and you don't have to give away any of your equity. Um, Look, I think I'm going to pass on this one because uh, I just don't know if I can add enough value uh, in, in the hospital chain. Okay, thanks, thanks very, very much. much. The three of you travel together in the car, no doubt, on the way up. So, uh, <laughs> what percentage did you say you would do a deal at? Well, I suppose that uh, we understand that there has to be a bit of wiggle room, um, and we did come in looking to give away 10%, but we would be willing to give away more if, like, we get a dragon on board, it's, it's, worth, it's worth more to us. I'm going to make you an offer of 30,000 for 10%. 30,000 for 10%. Yeah, I think that... Yeah. I think we're all right with that. Yeah, no, that's great. <laughs> well done. Well done. Well done. Thanks so much. Well done, Gavin. I think you've got something that has real potential there. There's a lot of potential, but you know, there's you, you do the odd sort of deal that you think it's that's a good thing to do. I'm proud of you, Gavin. Your heart's in the right place. They're, They're a great, great team. team. Great I team. think you have so, you, the meetings will be enjoyable with those three. They will. <laughs> they are great. Well done, guys. I've seen a lot of people happy going out of the den. I'm not sure I've seen anyone as happy as the three of you. Yeah. Oh, we're absolutely delighted. Um, yeah. We can't. We can't believe it. Really, I think it hasn't yeah. sunk in yet. Carissa, did you think that Gavin was interested right from the start? Yeah. The, I, it was hard to tell. They all seemed interested, but then it's it's just it's so hard to tell what they're thinking, and you just so want them to make an investment. That to be honest, like at the end there, I think he could have said anything, and we just wanted him on board one way or another. And when he said when he said ten percent, I thought he misheard him, but it, it was unreal to get what we were looking yeah. for. You put in a fantastic performance in the den. The very best of luck. Yeah, well done, Tamia. Well That's done. Great. Thanks very much. Congratulations. Great. Thanks, Richard.